to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, we have a session in the evening. This is a morning service. It will be very brief. But I want you to be very sensitive. Your life will never, never be the same. It is true. Never be the same. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. He says, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He says, and we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of God, we are changed into what we are seeing. And that's what is happening to you this morning. How else will you know you came to church? How else will you know you came to his presence? So I want you to be very sensitive, like your pastor rightly said. 
um, when you are in the presence of God, it's important for you to be aware of the many things that happen. Just one scripture and then we'll be seated. Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1. When God causes us to tabernacle in his presence like this is because he seeks to lift us. We do not have the ability in ourselves to rise. It says, he said to me, son of man, stand on your feet and I will speak to you. And the man did not have the strength to stand. He wanted to, the same way he wanted to be blessed. He wanted to rise. He wanted a job. It takes more than desire. I have the desire, but the wherewithal to stand. I, I know about the benefits of being prosperous, but the wherewithal, I know the benefits of a strong spiritual life. Then verse 2. Please keep the scripture there. And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me on my feet. Thank you. Thank you. Set me on my feet. The spirit. I didn't stand on my own. I couldn't have an agency. That means if it's not there, it's not there. You know it is there when you stand. It didn't say the spirit advised me to stand. He didn't say the spirit suggested rise up to a new level i want to rise I'm, I'm not i will not keep myself down intentionally he had no strength he says and the spirit in this kingdom it is not by power it is not by might there is a grace behind every effect by my spirit by my spirit by the lifting by my spirit are we together so i have very few minutes i won't take a long time but as you sit i want you to expect more than illumination there is an impartation an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities that means a dimension of spiritual reality that is not yet captured in your experience all of a sudden you see god reaches men by reaching a man every time he finds Jacob he thinks of Israel he doesn't bless Israel by blessing Israel he blesses Israel by blessing Jacob and you've heard me say when God wants to lift you he will introduce a man when the devil wants to destroy you he will introduce a man he stores his possibilities not in bottles in men there is this treasure so when you receive a man, you don't receive a body. You receive the sacrifice of alignment that has allowed that individual to host that dimension of God. Can someone pray in one minute and say, Lord, this is my morning. I didn't just come to church. Shift me. Shift me. Sabakato sabra hasigete balash. Sabakato zadege lekato sabra tisi. Rande sere balakato shkala branda skabari ashabara hasus. By wisdom, O God, heaven's gates open now. With understanding, you order the season. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light, arranging the stars to your pleasing. But I can't go night, and Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, eternity's holy King. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, whose words bring up peace. Hallelujah. Please be seated for a few minutes. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you again, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Mighty God. Acts chapter 8 and verse 26 to 31. If you understand what the Lord is going to teach us in these few minutes, it will change your life forever. Please, I like and I plead, even as your pastor has allowed that your heart be opened. Be opened. Be opened. It is not the word of God that changes people. The word does not change. It is the word that is received and understood and engaged that changes. Satan carries the word and it is unprofitable. Traditions can make the word of none effect. So just because the word is coming does not bless. You can be around the word. The word walked among people for 30 years. A few people received from him. You expect that just because the word was made flesh everywhere it went. No. The word walked until people engaged him. Out of 10 lepers, one engaged the word and it worked. It's amazing how he never put pressure on people to receive of his fullness, although full of grace. Are we together? Acts chapter 8 and verse 26. This was a very strange encounter that Philip had with a strange man called the eunuch of Ethiopia. Please listen. You see, the Bible says that the things that are written are for time. He said they are for our learning. That we through the comfort of scripture may find hope. That means more than the stories, more than the physical scenarios, there are mysteries of the kingdom, the methodologies of God hidden in those operations. So that when you study them by the illumination of the spirit, you will see more than a story. You will be able to see the writing on the wall and see that this is an operation of the kingdom. Are we people of the word? So let's follow the story. Now the angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying, Arise and go towards the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. We're reading to 31. So he arose and went and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians. The Bible says he had charge of all her treasury. This was not an ignorant man. This was not a poor man. This was a man. Anybody who keeps treasury has proven trust. Matthew 25. He gives unto men according to their abilities. So this man must have been a man who had been vetted for many years and have been found to be trustworthy to be the keeper of the queen's treasure. Are we together? The Bible says he came to Jerusalem to worship. So he went to church. Do we agree? Next verse. And was returning, the Bible says, and sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. So he was a devoted man. You see, look at all the wonderful qualifications. If this man were in my church, I would make him a deacon immediately. A man who can be trusted with finances. A man who can go on his own in spite of his schedules to worship. And then a man who on his way home cannot even wait till he reaches home is reading. Rare qualifications. Watch this. Then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. 30. <laughs> so Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, read with me believers. Do you understand what you are reading? Please give us King James. He says, understandest what thou readest. Stop there. Understand that. Please leave that scripture there. I know you went to worship. I know you are a sincere man. You do not mean evil. But understandest what thou readest. Next verse. Last verse. And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? How can I understand this? I, I know, I know you are tithing, but understand this what thou doest. I know you are praying, but understand this what thou doest. Listen very carefully. This kingdom 
is a compendium of spiritual possibilities only limited by God himself. Are we together now? That the faith life we are called into is an expression of the multifaceted dimensions that are resident in the Christ. Ephesians chapter 1, the third verse says that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings that they reside in heavenly places and routed through the Christ. Are we together? And this is the definition of what we call grace. Every possibility in God that can only be accessed to the saints through the office of the Christ. To call grace unmerited access is just one dimension. Grace like love is multifaceted. So every good and perfect gift, pastor, that comes to men and can only be routed through the office of the Christ is called grace. Wisdom is grace. Mercy is grace. Power is grace. Whatever is in God available to the saints only through the Christ. Are we together now? So the Bible says that they, are, they reside in the heavenly places. But that this kingdom was constructed such that the life-giving factor of every spiritual operation is called understanding. Please follow me. The life-giving factor of every spiritual operation is your understanding. That means your ability to comprehend the inner workings, the systems of the kingdom. Knowledge is not enough. It's important to have knowledge. But the acquisition of information is not enough. Just because I have the ingredients to make fried rice does not mean I can cook fried rice. I have the ingredients. I don't need to go to the market. I've passed that stage, but I can still cook rubbish. Because the combination is where the mastery is, not the buying. I can send someone, nobody is awarded for knowing how to go to the market and bring ingredients. A chef is a chef because of mastery, the advantage of understanding. Are we together? So your dominion and my dominion in this kingdom is not an impartation. Is more than a desire. Is the resultant effect of your comprehending the systems of the kingdom. This conference was designed by your pastor and by the spirit to file us and bring us to a realm of spiritual accuracy where we rise and understand the systems of the kingdom and the mysteries are located for the results that we desire. The kingdom was designed by God's own intelligence, so it works. There is no doubt as to the viability, the potency of his operation. The ignorance is in the gap of our knowledge. We usually would randomly apply principles in hope that one will work and it will, it will work. But there is no mastery. The Bible says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned, except he strives lawfully. If you're with me this morning, say amen. amen. Understanding is a miracle. Pastor, when you ask people to list the miracles in the Bible, they will list many obvious miracles and skip understanding. The real miracle that happens to a man is the miracle of understanding. Luke chapter 24 and verse 45. Luke 24 and verse 45. Jesus kept teaching these people and he saw that they, they were barren. They did not have the fortitude of comprehension and he had to perform a miracle that it takes the eyes of the spirit for men to see. Here's what he did. Then open he their understanding. Not that they might know. The Pharisees knew. Ye err, not knowing the scriptures. And they felt insulted. What are you talking about? Were we not your lecturers in the temple at age 12? You suddenly have changed? He says now. You search the scripture for in them. You think you will find life. He opened their understanding. That they might understand the scriptures. It's a miracle. Two men when Jesus rose up. Were on their way to a city called Emmaus. The Bible says they were talking about the scenario. What had happened three days ago. Jesus catches up with them. And he's walking. And he sits down with them. And these people have no fortitude to know. 
proximity with the word does not mean you understand it. The resurrected word was walking with people when they sat at table. The Bible says when he broke the bread, not when he gave them. When he broke the bread, their eyes were open. The opening of a man's eye is a miracle. Are we together this morning? Understanding. Proverbs chapter 1, first 10 verses. Emphasis is on verse 5, 6, 7. The Bible says, talking about wisdom. Just go to verse 5 for time's sake. Verse 5. A wise man will hear it and increase in learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. It says to understand this and that and that and that and that and so on and so forth. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Let's start from verse 4. We may not have all the time. Hear ye children. Okay, he taught me also. This is, this is um, the, um, um, the teacher now, the preacher. He said unto me, let thy heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Verse 5. Get wisdom. Say get wisdom. Then he says get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Six. Forsake her not and she shall preserve thee. Love her and she shall keep thee. Seven. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom. Then he stops and says but with all your getting. Buy a phone and leave the battery. And you bought nonsense. It says in all you're buying that expensive Nokia phone. Get the battery. The system that gives value and power to what you just received. Are we together? Understanding is a miracle sir. I do not believe that the body of Christ is in ignorance. No. The truth is there is no time in history where there is such a lavish communication of spiritual knowledge. God has helped us in this area and we have to admit it. You have Sundays now in Lagos and around the world. There are men and women, servants of God who have been given the eyes of the spirit. An exegesis of different dimensions of the faith life. But the missing ingredient is understanding. So we continue to propose a lot of spiritual realities that can be verified by the word, but do not sustain the ability to be demonstrated in our lives. So we know what God can do. And I can propose to you that there is restoration in the dealings of God with men. And you will not argue because it's in the word. But what is the kingdom mystery that controls that outcome? You see, the realities, the laws of the kingdom are very exact in operation. So the Bible says, awake thou that sleepest. He says, and Christ will give you light. Then he says to walk circumspectly. The word circumspect there is accurately. Time will not allow you to continue to guess. There are things that need exact knowledge fast. If you're with me, say amen. In 1 Kings chapter 3, the whole text is from 3 to 15, but then the verse of emphasis is 9 and 12. But the Bible says, Solomon offered a thousand bond offerings. He said he loved the Lord and he offered a thousand bond offerings. And that night, God came to him. You know, we keep saying that God gave Solomon wisdom. But let's see what God gave Solomon. Solomon was asked, what do I do for you for this depth of sacrifice? And here's what Solomon said. Give therefore thy servant, help me, an understanding heart. That's it. Do something, manipulate my heart and cause me, let my mind be open to understand the systems of the kingdom. I want to come into oneness with your methodologies. Impart upon me like prophecy a grace to know what is responsible for what. The inner workings of your system is a big miracle. God granted Solomon this and the first test would be two prostitutes. 
Very difficult case. One sleeps on the child and kills the child and quietly exchanges the child. And then they come to the man of God and he looks at them. And the first thing he draws the word of God. The moment the knife, because you see the word is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents. He said, bring me a sword. The moment the sword came, the truth came out. The goal was not to kill the child. The goal was to use the sword as an instrument to search. So the, the sword was like um, 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 a stethoscope that a doctor puts and then he can feel your heartbeat. And when the sword came into the scene, the truth came out. Give me an understanding heart. An ability to comprehend the systems of the kingdom. Please write this down if you're writing. Two things quickly. Number one, understanding is the foundation of true faith. There has been a lot of teachings about faith in the body. And the reason why for many of us these concepts, are, I'm, now, I'm teaching apostolically, so I'm just using the baptizing church as a platform. So you will hear me say a lot of things that may not directly be applicable to the church. I hope you understand. Yes. So understanding is the foundation of true faith. What is faith? Faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his person. That's what faith is. Faith is not believing. No. Conviction, persuasion, and the response you take in honor of that persuasion that is predicated upon something you know about God and the integrity of his person. Are we together now? Understanding is powerful. It is the life-giving factor of every spiritual operation. That means we can do things. It is not, write this down please. It is not just what we do that produces results, but the understanding that backs what we do. It is not just what we do. I can tell you this is why many believers continue to do well-meaning, word-recommended things and, not, and don't get the results. It is not what we do that produces the results. It is the understanding that supports what we do. How many of you have seen someone learning how to drive? When you watch a professional drive, he's so flawless, you may miss the steps. He may be talking while he's engaging the gears or doing this. And he says, oh, this is simple now. What is, am I so daft? I mean, I went to school. Shift is when you sit down, you'll find out that there were many things that were happening that although you were looking, you did not see. understanding second peter chapter one when you read from verse three and four second peter chapter one the bible says according as his divine power watch this now that his divine power hath given us how many things say all things that pertain unto life and godliness you've heard me teach on this and i'm happy pertain unto life god didn't just give us the things that pertain to godliness alone there are things that pertain to life your child's school fees pertains to life. The bill for your house pertains to life. Are we together? All the properties in Lagos that belong to the baptizing church, a believing person say amen, amen. pertains to life. So you can know the things that pertain to godliness, your spiritual health, your walk with God, and miss the things that pertain to life. His divine power solves both dimensions. That means it is not your godliness that is responsible for poverty. And it is not your prosperity that is responsible for your spiritual bankruptcy. The divine power of God created systems to be able to excel in every wise. But the Bible says, it is through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue. The next verse says, Wherefore hath he given us this exceeding great and precious promises? It says that by them we might be the partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So his power has given us all of that. Are we together? But although we have been given Ephesians 4 and verse 18, popular scripture says, having their understanding darkened, that's where the problem is. 
having their understanding darkened, darkened understanding. It says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. So the diagnosis to the lack of results is not wrong knowledge. Is that the understanding is unfruitful. The accurate knowledge of the methodologies, the systems of the kingdom. Do we understand this this morning? Yes. If I can bring you by the spirit of God, like your pastor has so laboriously done in this ministry, to a point where you have understanding, then there is no limit. No limit. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. The Bible, the Paul, um, I mean Paul was preaching in this scripture and he was talking about us being filled with three things. Number one, he says the knowledge of his will. Say the knowledge of his will. Number two, wisdom. And then number three, spiritual understanding. This is a man praying. Listen to me. He's praying and saying, if you want to excel, he says, if these things be in you and abound, they will make that you are neither barren nor fruitful in the knowledge of our Lord. If these things are in you, understanding. There are, there are certain things that must be in a believer's life. So I can be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. You are born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, but our possibilities are different. It is not a reflection of God's love. It is the degree to which, it is not even a reflection of God's favor is a reflection of our spiritual understanding and the resultant effect of it. All things are not possible for everybody in the kingdom. No, no, no. Are we together now? Yes. Even among virgins, some were wise and some were foolish. There are possibilities in the kingdom possibilities in the kingdom let me have four people any four gentlemen just if you are smart come out if you are not please sit down one two three four okay we have they they always think it's impartation okay so you stand here stand where the choir is and you stand here you stand here sir you stand here watch this call these people all the possibilities and the dimensions in the kingdom call this God's ability to restore call this God's ability to give speed call this God's ability to lift call this God's ability to favor call this God's ability to heal and deliver all of these dimensions are resident there are possibilities in the kingdom but the key is what are the systems allocated for making this a reality this is why we come to church, to be mentored and to be shown the ways of God. Are we together? Not only to be enlightened. Listen, let me tell you this. There are many people, pastor, who believe that just because they are intelligent, they understand God. When it has to do with spiritual things, you must know the difference between education and illumination. Education is fruitful. It enlarges your ability to allow truths to flow easily. But when it comes to the dealings of God with men, listen, you have to humble yourself. There is a realm in the spirit where both the smart and the foolish must depend on the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 29 and verse 11. I'll show you one scripture and then we will pray. I continue to herald these truths because these are the truths that bless us. Are we believers? Read with me. And the vision is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Note, it's not closed. It is sealed. Which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot. Why? Because it is sealed. Next verse. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. So both the learned and unlearned stand helpless in the face of understanding. That's why understanding is a spirit. Are we together? So we agree that the kingdom of God is a compendium of the multifaceted possibilities in the Christ that we call grace. 
but that it takes understanding. Remember, well, don't forget our scripture, the utopian eunuch, understandest what thou readest. So I can be in this kingdom, please look up, in need of restoration. Can God restore? Yes. Has he restored in the Bible? Yes. Am I in need of restoration? Yes. I have the scripture, yet my life is not restored. It is clear in scripture that he can restore my soul. It is clear in scripture that he can restore years. Now I'm standing in need of this operation of the kingdom. And remember, I am genuine like the Ethiopian Enoch. That's why I told you all the qualities in that man. He went to church, he was a worshiper, yet he was barren of understanding. And let me tell you something about our results. When our lives fail to produce certain results, we misrepresent the potentials of God within the context of a territory. Are we together now? Because we, we are responsible for discipling nations. That means that we mentor them into the correct concept of who God is. There was a man sent from God, the Bible says. His name is John. That the same came for a witness. That through his witness men might believe. That means that if my life cannot capture the possibility of God as a restorer, over a long period of time, I will be forced to build a doctrine out of my limitation to convince men that this is a possibility you should trivialize. This is what has happened to the church over many years. We have secretly tried to tap into various dimensions and the whiplash we have gotten as a result of our failure. Our ego has been on the line and so we decided to create all kinds of theological explanations. We don't exactly fight it, but we, are, we trivialize anything not working in our lives. But you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Yet another person comes to the baptizing church on a morning service like this, brothers and sisters, and in five minutes, you engage the principles that make for restoration. And by the time you get to your house, the same way the donkey went back home, Saul looked for it for three days, didn't find it. If Saul didn't meet Samuel, Saul would conclude that God cannot restore donkeys. It's amazing how that your challenges are relative to your understanding. They are a reflection of your limitation. That's why you see why we receive with meekness in the kingdom. Imagine the possibilities that can be manifested in my life and your life. You know, your, your dear pastor told me, had a wonderful time with him and his wife yesterday. And I was so touched when he told me how this place was. When I came in, I kept looking, comparing with what he said. And I said, I, I can't, I had to tap him and say, I can't believe this. You mean you turn this place into what it is now? Say understanding. Dominion is a product of understanding. We command possibilities in this kingdom, not by desire alone. Desire just sends you to the secret place. 18 and verse 1 of Proverbs. Through desire, a man, having separated himself, the Bible says, seeketh and intermeddleth with wisdom. So it, it drives you, but it does not just give you victory. Ah! So this is favor. Everybody say favor. We so desire favor because we know the effect, the advantage that favor provides on a man's life. Are we together now? Yes. I'm going to wrap up this morning's service with a prophetic word God gave me about this church. Just while we were sitting worshiping, you saw me typing. It's true. You see. And so this man represents favor and my life is in their need of favor. And I pray, oh God, bring me favor. And it looks like favor cannot come. Yet in the same Lagos, another brother is able to access understanding and steps into Lagos and every good thing like a magnet starts looking for him. The difference is not the love of God. The difference is not the heart of God. The difference is that understanding is like a voice. It sends a signal to the territory and begins to draw the things that are consistent. Please hear this. This is where the rest of the saints come from. That your labor is in understanding. Not just doing. Understanding. When the axe head is blunt, remember. 
So, dissipation of unnecessary energy sometimes may be proof that we are shadow boxing. So, God is calling us this morning to a realm of accuracy. There are forces in this kingdom. The Bible is a compendium of the possibilities that were activated in the lives of people. There are people who have been in Lagos for 15 years, 20 years. The earth has never given its increase. Yet the Bible tells you this ground you are walking on has food. But how do you make it come out? And someone comes into Lagos. Did you know I was discussing with your pastor very briefly in this office. Do you know this property was always there? Hi, my God. May God open someone's eyes this morning. And you see how cheap life can be. Understanding is like a lift. You get to, you see a skyscraper and you think you have to climb it. That's why you are afraid. But when you understand there is a lift system design. It's true. That in five minutes you get to the top floor. And someone looks at you and says oh, it's unfair. That word is relative. God wants to do something that by the time you are returning next Sunday, you will return and it will be on your knees from the start to the end of the service. And you say, we have never seen it in this fashion. Pastor, what happened? I went back home and I saw doors open. It, people started asking and say, I know you, you are a child of God. Where did you go to? He said, church. He said, where did you go to? Just calm down, bath and tell me the truth. He said, it's still church I went to. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Light is coming to you. Listen, listen. These are not just boastful expressions of excitement. No. No. We rejoice because of the, the invincibility and the immutability of God's counsel. Our confidence is not baseless. There is a dimension of God's power that supports his laws. So what dimension of these possibilities is not yet captured in your life? You have your CV. You've done well to go to school. And then you continue to, you hear that an average graduate may not get a good job within the first five or ten years. And you know that there are more graduates the, it's, it's an information age now not 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 and, and so that means that one machine can do the work of 500 people what do you think becomes your edge there is something you can know was it not in the bible when the vine dresser saw people sitting idle he said why sit thou idle they say no man employed us he did something for them and they got a job immediately do you know what it is that he did? Is God helping us this morning? I really want us to pray. I came with my heart to share this truth with us. I didn't come from a background that represents any kind of advantage to a man of God whatsoever. And you know, as we are from those regions, you, you are not, you don't have, you have moral support. They love you, they pray for you, they hope the God that called you will vindicate his word upon your life. It's true. Isaiah 60 and verse 1. It says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. Amplified says, arise from the depression and the prostration that situations and circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. That means you were not just on the ground. Something kept you there. Someone is shaking off these limitations. Shaking off these limitations. Shaking. This is what should happen. That you came to church stranded and by the time you are sharing the grace you are in a rush to go because you say I found it. I found it. You can go home and tell them look I found. They will laugh until the results bail you out. That wisdom and knowledge becomes the stability of your life. Your life is, is immovable. Unbendable. Are we together now?
there are people who are trusting God for increase in finances. Favor. You've heard me say it again and again. Everybody who favors you has a relative in need. What do you think will make them leave their relatives that are closer to them than you and come and bless you? No! Look at what happened to Pharaoh. That's what must happen to your helpers. 430 years he oppresses a people and in one day he is manipulated by the power of God and he gives them gold. When they leave Egypt he comes to his senses. That means he was not in his mind. This world that we live in is submerged in mysteries and only they that have the superior understanding as provided by the spirit of God. Did Elihu not say there is a spirit in man? 32 and verse 8, Job. It says, and the breath, the inspiration of the almighty. It didn't say makes men intelligent, makes men of understanding. There is a spirit in man. And the inspiration, there is an illumination given to a man, regardless of age, background, etc. Your pastor called for this solemn assembly this morning as a reflection of his passion to see you rise through understanding. Whatever understanding does not give you is not your own, even if you are holding it. You are only holding someone else's property. If you get money without understanding, you are simply holding the money for the owner to come and collect it. It's true. Understanding is a keeper. It is the life-giving factor of every spiritual operation. You can tie it without understanding as a bribe and you find out your heavens remain closed. That's what is happening to many people. You can do business without understanding. You see, nobody makes money off a job. Nobody makes money off business. Nobody makes money off in investment you make money of understanding all of those things are channels that give your understanding expression the key is understanding light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light my life like menorah light me lord Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord. Just pray in one minute where you are. Lord, I'm tired of this level in the spirit. Just where you are. Let there be a holy agitation. Lord, I know I can rise higher than this realm. Lord, I know and I believe things can continue to be like this. There has to be a way out. The Bible says there is a path which the eyes, the eyes of the eagle has not seen. The whelps of the lion has not gotten there. If my father knew better, he would have risen higher. If my mother knew better, she would have risen higher. Understandest what thou doest. Man of God, do you understand what you are doing? Businessman, do you understand what you are doing? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please sit down. There's such glory in this atmosphere. Your pastor said it. Mm. We'll soon find a time to round up. Let me just share with you 
one key one key for many years we have taught that favor works automatically we have said favor is unmerited and I know that it comes from a well-meaning communication but I found out it's not true a thing can be sincere but just not true the reason why we never experience favor is in the very definition we have received it is not unmerited that favor is a product of understanding 13 and verse 15 Proverbs please give it to us I will never be tired of teaching the body of Christ this that there is a pregnant woman in the Bible her name is understanding that when she gives birth to a child the name of the child is favor that there is also another pregnant woman in the Bible called transgression she can give birth to a child and the name of the child is hardship there is a science, there is an explanation to closed heavens. There is an explanation to a believer's life that never experiences beauty and glory. We will continue to blame God and we will continue to get agitated or we will continue to know there is a way out and remain there. Today, if you hear his voice, he said, that you harden not your heart like they did in the wilderness in the provocation. Good understanding giveth favor. It says, but the way of transgressors is hard. A transgressor is not a sinner. A transgressor is a consistent violator of God's ordinances. I can be a believer and be a transgressor. And my life continues to program a system of hardship. And I continue to ask God, why now? And other well-meaning, empathetic Nigerians just like me who say, see, life is like that. No, no. See, the greatest way to predict your future is to create it. It's true. I will give one scripture for this church, then share something. I have about 20 minutes and then we'll wrap up. One scripture the Lord gave me and then I'll give the other at the end of the service. Nehemiah chapter 9. While I sat down here, the spirit of the Lord began to speak to me. Nehemiah 9, 24 and 25. Nehemiah. This is the word of the Lord for this church in this season. And the children went in and possess the land and subdues before them the inhabitants of the land the Canaanites please keep the scripture there if you can the Canaanites and gave us them into their hands with their kings and the people in the land that they might do with them as they would 25 and they took strong cities and the fat land and possessed houses full of all goods not empty they didn't possess empty spaces wells digged already fine yards and olive yards and fruit trees in abundance prepared blessings it says so they did eat and were filled and became fat and delighted themselves in thy great goodness this was the first word the lord gave me so keep that as a word of prophecy that you are stepping into a season of prepared blessings. Was it not in the land of Samaria that by this time tomorrow, this and that will happen? And people stepped, four lepers stepped into a prepared blessing. Was it not in the days of Jehoshaphat that people went to fight with gold? When God is ready to lift you, men can do foolish things. Like going to war with vessels of gold. This is true. Now let me share with you just one scripture. And then we'll pray. Is someone ready to receive this morning? One of the keys of the kingdom. We have spoken about understanding. 
but I just want to share one key. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father who is seated on the throne. Please give me volume. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, He seated on the throne. You're singing because your life is about to change. Hallelujah, yeah. Listen. glory to the Father. Seated on the throne. First Corinthians 2 and verse 9. But as it is written, I had not seen, no dimension of revelation has entered this level. The idea stands for revelation. No ear has heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men the things that means there are things kept a body of knowledge the bible calls it marvelous light not light marvelous light it is access to that body of knowledge that makes a man a chosen person a peculiar people what is peculiar they are access into this body of knowledge that has been privy kept by the spirit that no eye has seen no ear has heard it has not entered the heart of man the things which god has prepared not for them that pray not for them that fast for them that love him please keep that scripture there it matters my brothers and my sisters there is a secret to commanding the jealousy of god upon a man it's more than prayer it's more than fasting are we together? There is a law that causes God to rise over a man as though unfair that can cause God to punish another man so that the person he likes can move forward. There, 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 there is a state a man can assume on earth that will make God act in a way that you need the spirit to understand him. The key is love for God. Not the desire to prosper not the desire to do ministry please listen the bible says thou shall love the lord your god with all your heart with all your strength with all your might there are many believers who do not love god they use god to get the things they love and the jealousy of god was designed to fight anything that takes his place in your life even if he's the one that gave it is God helping us this morning? That when you see God invest his power and glory and possibilities upon a man, many times it is not just a product of the dissipation of spiritual energy in activities, as though that is important. Many times it is not the personal reflection of the man's ability to study the Bible, ability to pray, ability to fast, that there is a realm where when a man becomes a lover of God, a genuine lover of God, there are certain possibilities that are allocated for such people. And Solomon loved the Lord. That was the motivation behind everything. And God so loved the world. That was the motivation behind everything. Not and God wanted to make sure he is king. And God loved the world. Behold what manner of love he says. The father has bestowed upon us that we be called the sons of God. Love. Love is powerful. In fact, the Bible says, listen, Apostle Paul in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, he takes out time to classify the operation and the gifts of the Spirit. Mighty manifestations of power, prophecy, and all of this. And then after all, he says, behold, I show you a more excellent way. A more excellent way of preaching is to preach in love. A more excellent way of prophesying is to prophesy in love. A more excellent way of doing business is to do business in love. 
And there is a time that I don't know why business people have not seen it. We want to succeed, but it says love never fails. That means if I'm failing and I attach love to myself, I return back. When the Bible says love never fails, it means whoever is connected to love has been immune from failure. Did they ever teach you that in a business class? That anything plus love is the result that God puts there. Love never fails. There are not many things that the Bible says never fails. Love never fails. So when I love the Lord with all my heart, I will never fail. That even when it's obvious that I should fail, his jealousy will come. Like a, like a woman offend you and you're about to quarrel her and the husband says, what's the matter? Your wife did say, hey, so what? And you are saying, you mean you are trivializing what your wife did? Say, well, unfortunately, she's my wife. So we have, to, we have to manipulate this now in her favor. My hands are tied because I married her. Love never fails. Very, very powerful. Ephesians 3 and verse 18. I wish I had time this morning. We have an evening session. The Bible says, let's start from 17. The apostle is teaching the church in Ephesus that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and what? This is the, the apostle teaching. Rooted and grounded in love. 18. He says that ye may be able to comprehend with all the saints the weak the length, the depth, the height, 19. And to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge. So Paul gives love dimensions. Please follow me. That love is not something that is just generic. It's not just an affectionate communication. That love has dimensions. Please listen. I want to help us in the next five minutes. And show us the systems that were allocated to loving God in a way and a manner that God can take the prayer request of another person and give to you. It's amazing how you can be planning for something and Pastor Dele will go somewhere to a mall and buy your prayer request and bring it to his wife who is not praying. And says, honey, I just brought this for you. And you see from afar. And, and your anger cannot change it. But you are wondering. Do you know why there are many people. Who even when they are not praying. Their relationship with God is praying. They are sleeping and their relationship is saying, Lord, increase this person. And so they see things come into their life. They cannot remember praying for I show you a secret this morning and then we will pray. These are truths that have become the foundations of my own life. Many times it is not in the vastness of knowledge. It is not in your ability to manipulate through human connections. But when the jealousy of God decides to shine on you, fearful is the man who God has vowed to see him rise. Is God helping us this morning? That in loving God, there are four dimensions, just like it is in loving any man. Please listen very carefully. The Holy Spirit just put this in my heart to share with us this morning and take a few minutes that we have. Please listen. Listen. It says the length, the breadth, the width, the height of the love of God. If you are loving God, it will require you manifesting four dimensions. And if you find yourself walking in these dimensions, my brothers and my sisters, you have an understanding that will compel not just the hand of God, but the heart of God to you. The first dimension of love is called passion. Write it down. Passion. True love is expressed in passion. Passion. And pursuit is the proof of passion. Anything you are passionate about, you will unashamedly pursue. There is vulnerability in love. The unashamedness to look weak. God himself seated on the throne. 
is not ashamed to express his love for man. It should be ego stinging for the everlasting king. But he says, I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. You know, the Bible says, what is man that thou art mindful of? The psalmist was perplexed and said, God, you've not lost your intelligence. Can you not just wipe this humanoid species and start another one? What is it in man that keeps making you return back? It's not like we ask you for forgiveness. God is not ashamed to express his passion to the point that he became a second Adam. This is a very sound Bible believing church. I hope you know that Adam was not deceived. It's in the Bible. Adam fell because of love. It was the wife that was deceived. Now that the wife had fallen, the man had to follow her. The same way the second Adam was not deceived. The second, they didn't scam Jesus in heaven. It was intentional. Your bride, the Eve, is, has already fallen. And the second Adam came willingly. It's in your Bible. So he came as proof of his love. Men don't fall because of deception. They fall because of love. Listen, are we together now? Passion. I love you, Lord. And he says, I'm watching your passion. Passion for your house. Passion for everything that is God. As a reflection of love. I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do, I need you more and more. Say true prayer that I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do, I need you more and more. So when you love God, it is expressed in your passion and your desperation. That Lord, I'm not seeking you just because of money and prosperity and increase and anointing and miracles. My passion, my drive, that's what drives you. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Not just because of a conference. I wake up in the morning and I'm happy to relate with you. Number two, very quickly. The second dimension of love, he talks of the length, the breadth, the height, the width. The second dimension is called commitment. Hmm. True love is expressed not only in passion, but in commitment. Look at me. There are times when desire dies, commitment keeps the relationship. I wish I would tell you that every time in your walk with God, it would just be rosy. It should be rosy in the end. But there are times when the journey may challenge you and your faith is busy working the things out. But at that time, you will not understand God. Like a woman looks at her husband and says, who are you now? In the last three years, you have been changing. Yet you will call her Mrs. His son name and she will still answer. That's not passion. That's commitment. The staying power, the ability to stay and remain God is an abiding God. It's important that people abide, abide and stay and stay. That was the edge that Elisha had over the sons of the prophet. They had passion, but they did not have commitment. Commitment is tested when there is nothing favorable there. Listen very carefully. You need commitment to work with God. Because the seasons where it looks like your heavens are closed. That you have to drag yourself to the place of prayer. Have you gone to pray and you just lay down there and say, God, at least I came. Just, just, I don't know the name of what we are doing, but I'm here again. That's not the day you are rushing to say, Lord, again. Lord, I preached a message and I'm suffering for it. And I stood there expecting you like my husband to come and you seem to leave me alone. Will you dance with me, oh, 
of my soul to the song of all songs that's the song of commitment will you dance with me oh lover of my soul to the song of all songs Ask any great man and they will tell you between his call and his manifestation there were seasons when they didn't know the name of what God was doing. Yet they maintained that routine. I need you to know that when God is silent there's something he's saying. You need to know that you must not talk to speak. That the silence of God is a voice. He's saying something. I can come to Pastor Dele's house and he looks at his wife and she goes to do something. They just communicated. But my understanding is unfruitful because I'm not part of that union. There are coded languages that are only for lovers. That when you say God, they are talking about me. Are you not hearing? And he keeps quiet. What he's saying is that I love you too much to put you in that battle. So you rest. Be still. You will not need to go around Jericho seven times. You just stay. Watch what I do. Patience is a virtue that forces deception to reveal itself. So when God is patient, he's not ignorant. He wants your lifting to be so justifiable before all and sundry. So he will allow the conversations to finish. Then he says, now let's go. Let me lift you regardless. Is God speaking to somebody? Everybody say commitment. There are many of you right now, probably God is talking to and those following online. You are saying, Lord, I don't know how from 2018, I don't understand you again. I used to just pray once and rent to come. Look at how you are watching them disgrace me. When you love him, you say, Lord, I don't know the name of what is happening to me. But let me tell you something. Even if you never bless me, I owe you my love forever. And God says, you are saying that to me? Say, yes, sir. And while that is happening, your landlord is knocking the door. Pastor! Stupid pastor that cannot pay rent. Your faith is not... I wonder what you are teaching your members. And you stand there. Listen. Let me tell you this. When you commit yourself to a man. It's a language our generation does not understand. The moment there is discomfort. There is an obsession for comfort and convenience. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you must. The staying power of destiny is commitment. You walk that business. You cook the food and eat it on your own, but you say this restaurant must work. It has to work. Not just two days and you say, God, I don't know why the thing is not mm -mm. commitment. Number three, our time is up. The third dimension of love is pleasure. If you cry forever, it's not the will of God, it's an attack. In this kingdom, there is joy. In this kingdom, there is peace. In this kingdom, there is laughter. God laughs, men laugh. In this kingdom, there is victory. So your life cannot be a circle of pain. There has to be the pleasure factor. Is it not at his right hand that there are pleasures forevermore? Very close to him. That means that one day I should love God and the evidence should be in my life. I should be able to eat well and say, Lord, this is your doing. That Lord, you move me to this house. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That Lord, you gave me this kind of husband. Thank you for allowing that one leave me. I didn't understand. But thank you. I would have made a foolish decision and I would have been crying by now. Thank you. Listen. Listen. Listen, fruitfulness is important 
is a good index for defining love. When all that happens in your life is suffering, you misunderstand God. Even your house help, not to talk of your children, that you help around. One time you can just call them and say, look, my dear, you'll be nice and faithful. Let me do something to you. Um, we are going to take you to America. They say, no, 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 no. Just, just take me to Abuja. I'm fine. Say, you are going to America. We'll make passport and take you to the U.S. And the lady says, in our life, we've not come out of our state. He said, that's it. There is pleasure. That's the reason why you shouldn't be angry when God is blessing your pastor and his wife. You see, most people have this idea. Once they see God blessing, they say, ah, must you be like this? Abba. It's a relationship. You should blame the person sending the, the, the blessings, not the ones receiving it. If I love you and you come to my house and I cook for you and someone is angry with you, is that correct? You should be angry with me. Everybody say pleasure. pleasure. Yes, sir. There is a pleasure dimension. So when we celebrate the miracles and the signs and the wonders, the favor and the lifting, you can return back and say, Lord, I thank you. That's why you give him pleasure too when you worship him. You see that? Yes. The last dimension of love, and then we'll pray this morning. Sacrifice. Hmm. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. The foregoing of comfort to preserve love. The foregoing of comfort to demonstrate worth. Is called sacrifice. I love you, Lord. I'm passionate towards you. I am committed to you. My work with you gives me pleasure, and I also seek to give you pleasure. But, Lord, if and when the need arises, I am willing to lay down all. Greater love has no man than this, than a man laid down his life. Listen, believers. God is speaking to us now. When you say, God, I love you, what exactly are you saying? Many people means, God, you give me so much pleasure. Please continue doing it. Many people say, God, I just got born again and I, I just am chasing after you. Others say, Lord, I'm committed though, because this thing has not worked. I've done everything it has not worked. And yet others have said, Lord, I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart. Sing, Lord, I will bow. I will bow to you to no other God but you We're wrapping up this morning service. This is the key. Lord, I will work. Nothing hands has made but you. We will not be careful in this matter, O King. We have been respecting you. But now as touching our love, we are not careful to answer you. That our God, it is in our dealing. Pleasure is part of the dealing. But even if there is no pleasure and it will take sacrifice. And God says, you are doing this for me. Lord, I love you. You just gave me five million naira. But there is something in my spirit and I'm carrying it to your house. I'm not raising money, you know. But you can drag it. And God says, what are you doing? And Solomon loved the Lord. Now you know what aspect of love that was. So you don't randomly call love, love all the times. No. There are times that love is passion. There are times that love is commitment. There are times that love is pleasure. But there are times that love is sacrifice. That's when you sing songs like I pledge allegiance to the land with all do you not know the song with all I am I will seek to honor his command I pledge
Yesterday, your pastor spoke to me. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. About his itinerary. Why do we do these things? Listen. In the last one month, I've not had the opportunity to rest. To truly rest. Many people never know a preacher's life and the labor that comes in serving the Lord. Your pastor moves around, traveling up and down. It's not about comfort. It's love that constrains men. You have a choice and you can say, Lord, please, I'm done. What happens when you prepare a message and serve members and they look at you and say, is that all? That death is working in us so that life will work in others. I show you the keys that can bring a heavy dimension of grace. Fire only comes when there is sacrifice on the altar. I wish what I were saying were a lie. But let me tell you my brothers and my sisters, we are rounding up this morning. If it is grace you want, if it is true fire you want, if it's a life that, that is compelling, there has to be that fire. There has to be that sacrifice. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye offer not your spirit, your bodies. Man of God, hear me. You have been praying and say, God, please make me anointed. Why do I speak and nothing happens in the lives of the people? I bless them. Make me like Pastor Dele. It does. There are things that are not transferable. You have to dig that well by yourself. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? TBC, this morning, God is speaking to us. Much less love and beauty and less worth. Nothing in this world. Oh, let it not be a special number this morning. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. That's the language of lovers. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. My weakness, you are merciful. Redeemer of my past and present wrong. Shela na masena dadia. You're the holder of my future days. Come on, lift your hands. Let's shout out the Lord in this place. Your presence is ever. All my days on earth I will love I show you a secret this morning. The moment that I see you face to face. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, you are the cup that Yes, you are the company. Yes, you are the company. Yes, you are the company. For your glory. Just to see you, to be for your glory, I will do anything, just to see Be well. 
rounding up right now. There is a grace that is coming upon you to seek God. This grace will begin to drive you to the secret place. And I decree and declare right now, I'm speaking by the Spirit. Receive of that grace. Receive of that anointing. Please just help those under the anointing. I stretch my hands. In the name of Jesus, receive that anointing. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. New wine, new wine, new wine, new anointing. It's time to step into a deeper level. Please help those under the anointing so they don't enjoy themselves. It's an impartation, a new level of hunger, a new level of grace. We're rounding up. Draw from you again, again. We've come to draw, draw, draw. Draw from you again. Listen. Listen. I want to pray and speak over your life. There is a grace for speed that I want to release upon your life. I want you to believe it. There is a grace that brings men into the realm of speed. I stretch my hands over the baptizing church and I stand in the name of Jesus. Step into that anointing right now. Receive that grace. Speed. Speed in your life. Speed in your destiny. Help those under the anointing. Speed. Dominion over time. Dominion over time. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When Pastor Dele was up here, he made a statement. I don't know if you believed it. He said there is a grace for the prophetic. The prophetic is not about the office of the prophet. It's about an alignment with the spirit of discernment. And I'm seeing the number 11. 11 people. That grace, I stretch my hands. Where are they? Receive that grace right now. Step into that anointing. Please help that woman. Step into that anointing. That grace. Drink of the wine. The eyes that see and the ears that hear. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will never be the same. You came for service this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One last prayer and then I speak over you and we are done this morning. Your pastor and his dear wife are reflections of a grace for favor. You see, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, there was an anointing that was upon Esther Hey guy, the keeper of the king's virgins gave her a particular ointment. He said, use it for one year. That's all it takes to secure the heart of Ahasuerus. And the Bible says, everyone that looked upon Esther favored her. People do not just help you because they want to. There are graces. I always teach that what is on you is what controls what is around you. Creation has never been disobedient. Something on you is what is instructing them. There can be a grace on a man that instructs creation to be violent towards you. Every land closes up. My head shall thou anoint like the horn of an unicorn. And I shall be anointed with fresh oil. This is not just some Pentecostal jamboree. No. 
it is an attempt to place something upon your life to begin to control the systems and the structures around your life and then you will marvel and wonder and know that it does not take time it just takes the right grace on you are we together the last verse that the Lord gave me for this church Psalm 44 and verse 3 we'll read it together and I pray Psalm 3 3 1 2 read for they got not the land in possession by their own sword neither did their own arm save them but thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance how did they get it because thou hadst favor unto them listen let me tell you if favor happens only once in your life it is not favor there's a difference between breakthrough and favor breakthrough brings you out of challenges to a place of rest favor is a system programmed by the intelligence of god that continues to recycle goodness in your life if someone helps you once and that's all that was not favor you i know we call it favor favor is favor when it is repeated and consistent the actors may be different but the operation is the same are we together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ the God of all flesh I stand in faith with Pastor Delia and his dear wife in the name of Jesus over the baptizing church let the grace for favor that causes men to arise as though under an influence to provide solutions for you without conditions may that grace come upon you may that grace come upon you listen in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters a king hates a woman and she loses her place immediately the king likes a village girl she becomes a queen immediately Mephibosheth is loved by the king and immediately he stays in the table who hates you does not matter but in the book of Esther there was no priest there was no man of God there was a village girl and a king she likes the king the king likes her and they become queens your journey can be shortened by the love of one man ordained by God the Bible says withhold not good from him that it is due when it is within thy power do you think there are people in this land that is within their power to be used by God to lift you there are people who leave your city and go down to our cities and bless us and bless other people there is a grace you have seen it in the life of your man of God I pray for you whoever must arise in this season by the spirit of the living God and cause you and your family to enter your Sabbath experientially I declare may that grace cause them now every dying business in this church in the name of Jesus we give life to it everyone in this church trusting God for a job please have the faith to believe in the name that is above all names I stand in faith with your dear man of God and we decree and declare according to the time of life I'm speaking by the Spirit except God has not called us I stand here and I speak to you by the God of Jeshurun the one who rides upon the wings of the wind between now and the next 90 days you return with your job
family under financial pressure here. I declare, was it not a raven that came to Elijah at Bucheri? There is a mystery of divine supply. I decree and I declare, may men arise right now to wipe your tears. Let me speak prophetically. And he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my feet. I stand by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic grace and I declare TBC let your spiritual borders be enlarged enlarged to a new dimension in the name of Jesus we enlarge your tents we open the true lift gates over this ministry and we cause enlargement in the name of Jesus we are all standing upon this great property in the name of Jesus, we declare the ark bearers that will write off the, the financial bills for all the capital projects of this church. I stand as one cent and I speak in the open. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, we prophesy to the wind, we speak to the north, the south, the east, the west of Lagos, that all those who must stand and hold the hands of Pastor Dele and his dear wife in achieving these visions. The errands and the horse, we speak to you. Captains of industry, we compel your compassion towards this church. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare whatever is your own and has not entered your hand in this Lagos by the spirit of faith by the spirit of grace by the spirit of prophecy I stand again in agreement with the man of God please believe I release it to your hands now Finally, every long-standing issue in your life and your family. The Bible says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore. Shall the captives of the mighty be delivered? He said, even the lawful captives. Is it not in your Bible that when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion? He said, we were like them that dream and our mouths were filled with laughter and said they among the hidden the Lord had done great things. He says the Lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity says like the streams of the Negev. I declare that every mountain that stands before anyone connected to this vision, connected to this grace, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, receive your testimony. Receive your breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. And may your hunger for God step in. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Catabranda Catacos, Catabranda Catapacotosco to break a take a legata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.